Well, the conflict has taken its toll on the people across the region. Entire families are forced to hide in their basements or have nowhere to live because their houses have been destroyed. Thousands more have fled for safety. RT's Roman Kosarev has just returned from several weeks in one such area caught up in the violence. Here's what he told me. Well, you know, it's a sense of uh, never-ending fear. It's like uh, constant uh, expectation, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, of a plague. Um, you know, during the day, uh, people uh, might be, uh, you know, less fearful, but when, it's, when, it, when it comes to nighttime, it's constant shooting, it's uh, uh, constant uh, artillery fire, people hiding and, you know, uh, kids uh, w waking up from all this noise. So it's certainly very horrible scenes out there. And we're seeing some of the destruction there. I mean, does this match up with what you saw personally there? I mean, it looks like a city that's devastated. Absolutely. We see uh, shell-shocked buildings uh, with, and in the cities of Slamyansk as well, people are completely scared. Uh, they want to leave and they don't know what to do. They don't know what the, what the future holds for them. Those places are certainly becoming somewhat of a ghost town right now and uh, heading for uh, famine. They have uh, no electricity supplies. They have no water supplies, uh, no food. We could see uh, lines of uh, uh, people uh, like about f at least five kilometers long to get simply to get a little bit of water. So local mm -hmm. authorities are already saying that we are heading for a famine and uh, more than half the residents of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk and uh, um, Lugansk have already left. Uh, a lot of them have found a refuge in Russia, mm -hmm. um, in the Rostov region in particular in south of Russia. But uh, that place is now filled to capacity. Yeah. They can't accept anymore. And uh, there are other regions of Russia now welcoming uh, the, those poor souls. Yeah. I mean, to me, on the outside, listening in, it, it appears like we're just talking about a war zone here. We're talking about people who cannot find food, cannot find water. They have got shells landing in their backyards. I mean, it's, it's basically it's just a horrific scene for, for, for normal people who can't imagine what is going on. Well, the, there was uh, this scene uh, where uh, a missile flew, like, like you said, into a backyard uh, of this uh, private uh, residence. Uh, a kid was playing in this backyard and uh, the mother of this kid, the kid was like five, four or five years old and uh, the mother heard the noise of a missile flying in. So she was downstairs and she uh, ran out to grab her kid. She picked him up, she uh, uh, grabbing her arms to, to, pr to protect him and a shell exploded right there in front, in front of them and they killed the woman instantly. They tried to save the child. The doctors worked on him uh, the entire night, but uh, he died. They uh, discovered 30 shell fragments uh, in his uh, head. And that house was far away from any kind of a blog post, any kind of, uh, of even a suggestion for a military uh, mm -hmm. position. So uh, definitely civilians feel they are specifically targeted by the Ukrainian military. And remember, you can always get the very latest updates and the background on the mounting crisis in Ukraine. Just head to our website, rt.com.